Einen wunderschönen guten Tag wünsche ich euch hier in der TU Graz. Ursprünglich wollte ich meinen Vortrag auf Hochdeutsch machen, aber dann habe ich gesehen, was für Vokabular man hier benutzt und dann habe ich diese Idee sofort verworfen. And that's the reason why I'm going to speak in English. My name is Miroslav Shedivi. No, 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 that's still wrong cable. Maybe if you turn the USB cable the way around. No, 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 that's still wrong. Are there any issues with the camera or no, no, yes. So my name is Miroslav Shedivi and sometimes I hear that my name is invalid. So this is how you write it. This is how you pronounce it correctly with the International Phonetic Alphabet. And if you use Linux and you have configured uh, the Compose key, then this is how you can type it uh, on any keyboard layout you are using. Today we are going to speak about two things. One is the names and strings manipulation in Python. I have used Python as the example language where this works uh, really well. If you are using Python, then you will find the examples most useful. If you are using other programming language that has similar functions and similar possibilities, then it's fine. You will find the alternatives how to do it in your programming language. And if you are using programming language that doesn't support this stuff, then please don't work with names. Start with something simpler like phone numbers or shoe sizes or something like that, but don't work with names because If you say that name are names are invalid, no, names of people cannot be invalid. And in the second part, exactly, we are going to speak generally about uh, names, uh, their usage on uh, in web forms, uh, how to work with them in general. So, in Python 3, anyone using Python here? Oh, there are a few people, very nice. So, in general, in Python, there are two types of things that look like a string. The first one are real strings, so that every character is one of those one million code points from Unicode. And then, but this is something that is only in the working memory. And there are bytes, the old classical uh, eight bit uh, memory slots that uh, can hold up to 256 different combinations. And this is that is on file on your system and that goes over the network. And now, The issue is, how do you convert between them? Because name usually doesn't fit into a byte. You don't have 256 combinations, it's not enough to explain our characters. And in strings, you have enough to do, uh, to work with characters, uh, with most characters that are out there in the world. In Python, so if it looks like a string with uh, double quotes or simple quotes, this is string on the left side. And on the right side, there is a small b before that, and it means bytes. So you have like a byte, uh, an array or a list of uh, uh, byte uh, characters or co points. Um, if you have a string, you use encode to get uh, bytes out of it, and from bytes to strings, again, you use a decode function. This works automatically, usually very well for UTF-8. Um, If you have your name is uh, Chuck Norris, then you have no problems because, well, you control all the bytes. Um, you have uh, 12 uh, characters as string, and it uh, converts to 12 bytes uh, on uh, the file or over the network. On the other hand, if you come from some German speaking country and your name is Müller, or you have some other character that is beyond ASCII, uh, then the six uh, characters of Müller they convert to seven characters uh, or seven bytes uh, in UTF-8. And if you have some Chinese, this is not a name, this is just Ni Hao, so a hello in Chinese, then the do, two Chinese characters, they need six bytes. So this is different and this is something that you shouldn't actually take care of because when you receive something from a file or from network, you just decode it, you work with strings the whole time and at the end when you need to write it somewhere, send over network, then you just convert it back to bytes. Um, Default encode decode works with um, UTF-8, uh, but you can also define some other things. So, for example, ASCII uh, that is supported for ASCII characters. So, this is something that works for Chuck Norris, but not for Müller. Müller cannot be encoded into ASCII, but he can be encoded into Latin 1. And then for U uh, umlaut, there is exactly one byte that is defined in uh, Latin 1 and that uh, can be written as one byte. My last name, Shedivi. Uh, means gray-haired. Um, this is a uh, Czech-Slovak uh, uh, name. Uh, in languages like Czech, Slovak, Polish, Hungarian, uh, we cannot use Latin 1 
we use Latin too, or we used that 30 years ago. So this sh and the long epsilon, they lo both uh, convert to individual bytes uh, in Latin too. But, well, this is not for the first, for the last time. There is one big uh, company that sends packages all around the world um, that sometimes sends me packages like this. And the question is, where does this come from? Because on their website, I entered my last name correctly with sh. And now, maybe they are using Python and maybe they did it the wrong way. Because if you take shgv and you encode it in Latin 2, it will be correct uh, Latin 2 characters, but they are based in Germany. So they don't know that maybe there are people who are from uh, a little bit further from the east. Um, but if you take my last name and you convert it uh, to Latin 1 or you encode it to Latin 1, that it doesn't work because the sh character doesn't exist in Latin 1. It is not defined. So they would receive an error. And can you imagine this company with such an uh, exception raised and uh, not handled? No. Th there is a possibility in Python to do something with errors. So if you do errors and replace, it will automatically replace all characters that uh, are not defined in the encoding that you are uh, coding into with question marks. So this is actually where this very probably comes from. They encoded it into Latin 1 and the sh was not uh, recognized, so they just replaced it with question mark. But if you want to be nice and you don't want to put uh, question marks everywhere in Python, you can actually uh, do something more. You can even define a function that um, replaces these uh, characters uh, as a function. So for example, this one uh, replaces uh, unknown characters with uh, random digits. So it would work like that. This is very random that the five looks like a sh. And there are other companies that just use other failed systems uh, of uh, coding encoding. These all three screenshots are from one envelope that come came from one German company that uh, writes those uh, white uh, trains that you can even see in Vienna that come from the West. So the one is like their card, the customer card, another one is on online ticket, another one is uh, uh, the letter that was printed. So you see that they, this is like fun. Every time you, you I receive some letter, I'm just uh, guessing what encoding, what was their way of thinking, how did they encode it? This is another big company that uh, has big uh, fly, uh, airplanes, also based in Germany. And they say, you can only enter letters in the adult's last name field. I'm adult, I have last name, and my last name consists of letters. Why don't they like my last name? But what is a letter? Because shady v, there are six letters in it. In Python 3, you can even name a variable using letters. So for example, this shady v uh, is a valid variable name question marks and something that is not defined as a letter. You cannot put it into variable name, but anything that is defined as a letter, you can put it there. Um, and to know what is a letter in Python or in general in Unicode, you can import Unicode data from the standard library and then take a list of your characters and then ask for the character, the category of the character and for its name. So for example, in this uh, short list, you see in the first column, you see the character. In the second column, you see L-U-L-L. -L. This means that this character is in Unicode defined as a letter, uppercase, letter, lowercase. There are letters that have no uppercase, lowercase concept like in Chinese, then they are just marked as letters without uppercase or lowercase. Then you see space is uh, ZS. This is like uh, special um, punctuations. PO is punctuation, ZS is uh, some sort of spaces, and then SO is, are some sp extra characters like uh, smileys and so on. And this is how Python or any programming language knows. Do I, should I consider this as a letter? Should I consider this as a number, digit, or some other special characters or whatever? And these are all the categories that uh, can be used uh, in uh, Unicode that are defined there. And if you open like some character map and you search for, sec for the character, you will find all the information about this. But also the programming languages like Unicode data library in uh, Python knows uh, all the information about it. Next uh, topic is case folding. Case folding means conver converting between uppercase and lowercase. Simple, you have some letters on the left, you convert to upper one direction and lower to the other direction. There are some exceptions. So for example, uh, the sharp S, S, sharp S, in uppercase, there is a sharp S uppercase character defined, used in Germany. If you have uh, some text like uh, this Linux tag and you would like to write something containing upper, like sharp S, then you write it with sharp S. 
it looks a bit different. But, but in Python, it is defined that if you have these lowercase such half SS and you convert it to uppercase, then you get SS uppercase, which is like not reversible. And you see on the right side, it, this is actually the uppercase uh, Schaff SS that is defined in German German. How is it in Graz? Do they use Schaff SS here? I don't know. So, and uh, well, and there is okay. So this is like the characters that you would say like beyond ASCII, special defined for some countries. In some countries, it is defined like that, like that. But actually, there is also within ASCII there is something that is broken in case folding, and we are responsible that we broke it for one language used in Europe, at the border of Europe. And that's the I letter. You think this is normal. You take lowercase i, convert to uppercase, back. This is I as I. Okay. But anyone understand some Turkish? Because in Turkish they have two I's. They have the first one with dot, that's E, and the other one without dot, that's Ü. And these are two different characters. If you build words with one of them, it is it, with the other one, they mean something else. Now imagine if you take our uppercase I without dot and you convert it to lowercase I with dot, for Turkish people, it can mean something different. So there's a problem for them. And if you use, uh, and if you are working with uh, Turkish names or Turkish uh, strings, then actually you have to import an extra library that knows how to do it and that converts it correctly. So don't use like the basic uh, uh, string converting utilities if your customers are from Turkey. Normalization, this is something that is mostly invisible for most of you because the words look the same. But now the, in the difference is in the information that is in the character that, uh, for example, the U umlaut, you can have it like a single character that is defined as U with diaresis, or you can have a U as a letter and then a modifier that tells the previous letter gets a diaresis on top. And if you look at these two words uh, with uh, Unicode data in Python, you can like normalize them between the, the two forms. You see the difference between the two. In the first uh, list, you see that there is the U, uh, Latin small letter U with diaresis. In the second one, you see just plain Latin small letter U, and then there is combining the arises. And if you think that this printout is like not aligned, then the, uh, the second or the line number two in the word two is indented to the left a little bit because actually this diaresis doesn't have a width. So it like automatically when I printed it, it uh, indented it uh, or moved everything to the left because uh, this doesn't have a width because it only modifies the character before it. And sorry, uh, it uh, doesn't uh, move the your carriage on your line printer to the right. It just prints and it doesn't move the carriage. If you know what carriage is on a printer, this is this carriage return that returns the carriage. So the, the concept is the, like that. Um, you can have some fun with it. So, for example, this is old uh, Stack Overflow question, uh, whether you can parse uh, HTML using uh, regex. Uh, you cannot use it. And text is fun to read, but the thing that is like inter interesting for us is at the end, what you see there, this cloud of, uh, of ink, um, is actually the letters with plenty of modifying characters. And there are plenty of modifying characters that add some diaresis, dots, commas, ogonek, uh, whatever, make chain, uh, on the top, on the bottom, and then it can look like this. Next topic is sorting, alphabetically. In Python, you can like sort it, it gets a list of strings of characters. In this case, it is like a string of, uh, or a string of characters. Um, and it sorts them, uh, it sorts them. It doesn't sort them alphabetically. It uh, sorts them alphabetically if you have like A to Z. But if you have uppercase, lowercase, then you see that the order is according to the code points in Unicode, which means that first come the ASCII uppercase, then ASCII lowercase, then some Latin one characters, but not all of them, because like the sharp as lowercase is still there, but the sharp as uppercase came later. So it is completely at the end. And then comes some Latin two. So this is something that you don't want to use as to sort. And this is also the reason why me with my last name, Shedivi, I find myself quite often at the end of the alphabetic list of people, of speakers or whatever. You have to tell the program which language are you thinking it. In this case, this is the 
German. And if in German the A umlaut or the umlauts, they are just put next to their equivalents without umlaut. But then you have some people from Sweden and they put all the umlauts at the end of alphabet. So you, if you sort, you have to tell, okay, I have that. If you have international conference, if you have people from all around the world, then you have to choose one sorting, because of course you cannot sort Swedish people according to their system and German people according to their system. If you have a website, you can ask the user for their locale and then sort it according to it. And there are also other languages where they have special or special, special rules or rules that are not so trivial to read. So, for example, in Hungarian, um, Cipers, uh, th this CS is the sound of CH, and it is like a letter between C and D. So, CS, Cipers, you put it after Zwickli, although the S would look like it belongs before uh, V. In Czech and Slovak, uh, we have uh, this Hacek, which go directly after the equivalent of CH, 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 and so on. And there is also this letter uh, or the character, the two characters, but the sound of H, which uh, comes between H and I. But also there are some combined words where the first one ends with an C and the second one starts with an H. So it is not a H, it's, so for example, more voices, it's Vyac Hlasny, and there is a CH in the middle, but actually it belongs to two different parts. So you cannot sort alphabetically just like that. In French, they have a wonderful rule. They convert everything to ASCII, they sort it according to ASCII. And then if there are some accents, they sort it from the end of the world. So, for example, in this case, the second, like the last uh, syllable, this te, te uh, is uh, first, uh, it is without uh, the accent gra aigu, and then it comes with accent aigu. And then within that, you sort it according to the penultimate syllable. These are some rules in some dictionaries. Maybe we have some French here who could confirm it or uh, say that there are some other rules, but there are dictionaries that, official dictionaries that use also this rule. So now, very te technical Python next thing, um, local is connected to process. So if you use this, the standard local and you modify it, then you modify it for the whole process. And if you are in some library or you have some web server that sorts something for some user and you change it, then of course you break it for everyone else. In that case, I recommend to use the ICU library that uh, is object-oriented and then creates objects that can be used to sort uh, stuff according to some language rules specific in every thread or in every function. Or you can use the PyUCA, which is simple. And you see the difference in the third block of code. Uh, there, are there is no specification of the, um, uh, of the language, which means that the PyUCA has some ordering that looks good, but that is not specific for Germany, specific for Sweden. Uh, that is general. So this is something that you can use if you have, if you want some general list, alphab alphabetic-like looking list uh, of uh, names that you want to sort. Otherwise, if you have specific locales, then use the ICU library. And at the end, there are regular expressions. So if you have a problem, you can use them. Then you have two problems. Uh, let's say that uh, in this uh, string, uh, München 1, 2, 3, we want to extract the word München. What you can do, you can like check for everything that looks like a letter, A to Z, A to Z, then, but of course then it extracts the M, ignores the U umlaut, and extracts the N hen. It's wrong. You can use backslash W, but backslash W is defined for all alphanumeric characters, so it takes also the numbers, while it sees the U umlaut correctly, but we don't want to the one, two, three, we would like only everything that looks like a letter. And then you remember these Unicode uh, categories, and that's here, you import regex, the third-party library that works like the standard RE, but has some more functionality. And that allows you to use the backslash P, and then in curly braces, you define the category of the character that you want, and uppercase L is defined as a letter. And this allows you to choose really only everything that looks like a letter in a regular expression. This was Python, and now let's get, you know how already to work with strings in Python or in your program language, but now let's have a look at names, how you are going to deal with them in your online forms, in databases. Who of you fits this form? First name, last name? Not everyone. Okay, which means that there are maybe people who have some middle name. Or there are people who have patronymic surname, metronymic surname, so like from Spain. 
you can have people that are, for example, from Nordic countries like Iceland. And if someone is called Sigur and his father was Johan, then he's called Sigur Johansson. But Johansson is not his last name. You never say Mr. Johansson. You say Sigur or Mr. Sigur Johansson because Johansson is not a last name, it's patronymic. Then also we have something like last name, first name. So some East Asian countries or Hungarian. This is last and first, so other way around. Are there any queens, uh, kings, popes here? No? So maybe you have something like that, or you have simply a na just a name. And this is how it should look like. In an online form, if you ask for a name, just ask for a full name and let people write something there. You are not the government who has to issue some ID or to check it somewhere in some databases. You just, what do you need the name for? You just have to print uh, this, that's fine. Uh, maybe you have to send an, a letter. Then if the name is not correct, then the post office has a problem or the person has a problem with the post office. It's not your problem. Just take your responsibilities and use them and use the name for the purpose that you need. The, the post office looks only after the address. They look only after the address, yes. In, in Austria, even you have like the number of the flat and Stiege and everything. So of course you don't even need the name on your post. You can have nicknames, pseudonyms, of course, yes. But pr very probably this is not your job, to validate the names. And of course, there are, just not to forget, there are plenty of parts of the names that are not always clear whether they belong to the last name, to the first name, where to write them, and many forms like uppercase them or delete them or do whatever. And we are not speaking about apostrophes, dashes, and so on. So, and once you get a doctor, PhD or whatever, then this becomes a, becomes a part of your name, but also I'm not sure where to put it. So please use just one field for the full name, full name. And if there is something like that, I don't mind writing here Miroslav Shedivi, but everybody calls me Miro. So that's fine if you write there Miro. So how should we call you? Just tell Miro. Because of course there are people who just don't fit exactly uh, the system, but they have some explanation. Okay, put it like that. Um, and But still you find websites like, please enter characters from the European character set only. European? Hey, Prague is lies to the west from Vienna. This is still Europe. Please enter a full valid name. Yes, my name is valid. The name of people cannot be invalid. Please don't assume anything. Don't put random limit on the length of the name. If this doesn't fit here, well, it's my problem that I, if I want you to have only ma the name as you should call me that, of course, I will put like one, two, three words, it, it will fit. If not, nobody is going to read it. And there are people who even had their uh, article on Wikipedia and uh, someone introduced the typo in that and it l left there for weeks before noticed by anyone, like in this case. Don't use stop words. Something that looks like a stop word in your language can be a perfect legal legal word in other language. There are no stop words. You shouldn't consider them. The family members don't have necessarily the fam same family name, which means the, f in my case, Shedivi Shediva, like gray haired, it's an adjective. And uh, the masculine, like men in our family are called Shedivi, the f women are called Shediva. It looks like that in Czech and Slovak. In, and in other languages, you have plenty of other cases that are also a little bit different. There are different transcriptions from non-Latin alphabets. In, other, in one way, so for example, Cheho, a few European languages, and you see it, it is always written differently. The other way around as well. Many years ago, I went uh, to Russia and had to have a visa within a few months, and I got two visas, and on both of them, my last name was transcribed into Cyrillic alphabet differently. So they also didn't know how exactly how to do it. So there are plenty of alternatives, and you should like be okay with any of them. With Chinese is also the same. Many languages have different uh, ways of uh, writing it. Men change their family names too. So of course there are men when they marry, they take uh, the name of the of their uh, wife. And of course, if you ask them for their maiden name or nay, nay is like the feminine name, doesn't work. And one name, uh, one letter name is very probably not an initial. So for example, Benoit B. Mandelbro B is not an initial. It's just B dot. So very probably all printable characters are okay. We don't know. You certainly have heard of this guy, Christopher Null. 
Hello, I'm Mr. Null. My name makes me invisible to computers. There was also someone else who put Null on the car plate. And he thought, okay, they are not going to identify me. But the problem with the police was that every uh, violation of the speed limit that was where the car was not identified went to him. Because it was like the death null where everything went. And suddenly there was a person there behind that and they received it. And little Bobby tables, I don't have to explain this to everything. If your database has this problem, then I'm sorry. We are 2022. There are also problems with the names of uh, streets and cities. Streeti streets and cities are often called named after some people, so of course this is also with a name. Who can tell me which is the most widespread uh, street name in German-speaking countries? <laughs> and it also depends on uh, how you uh, write it or read it, because look at this. Hauptstraße, Hauptstrabe. If you search online for the word of Hauptstrabe, whatever, there are plenty of U US based uh, company listings of German companies who just OCR or whatever convert it somehow, and you find any Strabe like plenty of times. Also, the names of places. If someone was born in O or in E, well, you cannot impose. Some limits, like what is your mother's maiden name, and oh, at least six characters. <laughs> and also for the names of places, you cannot do that, because they can be short, and they can be also long. So if you go to Wales and visit it doesn't fit probably your address field. Or this famous Polish movie from the 70s, the guys named in the scene, Grzegorz Brzęczyszczykiewicz, and Name place of birth is Chrzęciszewoszice, uh, Powiat Wenkowody. Yeah, exactly. You see that German officer, and this is like a scene of two or three minutes. If you just uh, copy uh, quickly the name and uh, look at the short YouTube video, it's really fun to watch uh, how people are dealing with names that are not so easy to transcribe. And sometimes you even don't need an address. If you nice rightly, oh, you have to go to that house behind that somewhere, then it will arrive as well. These were some examples. Just there's old website, 2010, so it's 12 years old. It is referred to quite often. And this is a list of 30, 40 uh, different rules that you should consider when you, are w when you want to work with, uh, with names of people. People have names, yeah? Okay, so there are plenty of rules that you, you shouldn't assume that uh, the stuff will work with the code that you have. Yes? There can be people without names. Not here, probably, but there can be people around the world without names. They are very probably not going to use your website, but yes. Yeah. Okay, so your name is invalid. I don't want to see this anymore, but I am seeing it. Uh, please respect the names of your users. The names of people cannot be invalid. Uh, this is Python's don't break the locale, so use some uh, orient uh, object oriented stuff. Hamburger principle convert from bytes to string as soon as possible, work with strings and then convert to bytes as uh, late as possible. UTF 8 is cool, Python 3 is cool, of course, be cool too. Don't use Python 2. Anyone not using Python 2 here? No, uh, that's nice. And if you tell your user that your name is invalid, that's not cool. Because you will land on one Twitter account. Your name is valid. This is also an issue with uh, Twitter because your name is invalid is too long. So I had to register your name is valid. But this, this is something that if you also see somewhere, you have screenshots, screenshots. Only screenshots will be retweeted if you have some screenshots that just mention your name is valid and there are already a few people who are following this. And be nice. Thank you very much. <laughs>